तेरी सोच करे कृपा सोच क्यों कर दम तेरी सोच करे Yeah. 
Giving up me, me, do the, the, the protector protects you. In the court of the Lord, the support of the, we have the support of the Master. The mighty car moves back. He always protects those who are clean and true within. Reducing the gallows to a pink peak. He cuts the track of the attachment and Maya. Our oh, benefactor master, I thank you a million times. After coming, you have taken care of your journey. <coughs>
So this is the bhajan we are considering this evening for Satsang. It's a beautiful bhajan by Santajai Singh. And in very simple words he tells us what's important for us. The topic is worry. He says, Kirpal worries for you, and why do you worry? <coughs> this is a topic that passes us very often. How much should I worry about myself? And how much God should worry about myself? Is there of any use me worrying about myself? Or is it just trust and accept the will of God as it is? And just go with it. How much should I do and how much should I allow the power of the Guru to work in my life? Worrying and doing is two different things. So I mean we have to do nothing. We have to do the best of ways, but without worrying. Doing something with trust and doing something worrying about it is different. So when it says Kripal worries for you, why do you worry? Does it mean that he does everything for you and you have to do nothing? It means you do everything, you do your best, but don't worry about it. Just trust. Because the attitude by which we do things is what is going to determine the consequence, the result of it. So if you do anything by worrying and thinking, I'm not going to succeed and it's going to be bad, um, then we just pave the road for the thing to go wrong. But if you do anything with full trust that Sadhguru is going to help me, if I do my best and he will come to my rescue, he will help me and things will work eventually fine, then we are going also to pay the road for success. Master Kirpal used to say, <coughs> three things kill a man. Worry, hurry, and food undigested. So, worry. Is there one who is worrying? And also hurry goes along. Usually we are worried then we hurry up to, 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 to try to, to succeed, to, be, to, to do whatever we want to do. None of this is going to help us. He it says it's going to kill us. So trust is the way. No worry. Whatever happens to us, we do our best to make it go the way we would like it to go according to our best understanding. But eventually, the result what comes out of it, we have to accept and adapt with it without worrying that it's bad. Now this has happened. It seems to be very bad. I would have liked it to be different. We would have liked it to be different. We must like it to be different before it happens. But once it has happened, then that's the will of God. So that's, that's fine. So that's what I always say. Before anything happens, you do your best to make it go the way you understand it to be better. But once it has happened, just go with it, adapt with it, accept it.
So is there a way to improve our situation? I mean, uh, to make things work out the best way possible. It depends on our attitude. Again. Is there a way? Yes, there is. If we allow the way to happen by acting, by by going with it the best way we can, by doing our best. But then the result is the combination of so many factors. And uh, sometimes it goes the way we like, we would like. Many times no. But then we have to accept His will. And not worry, but just surrender. Understanding that if this part of myself, this part of my prayer, this part of my will, it has gone this way, it means that in this situation, according to all the factors involved, it couldn't be any different. Just fine. Okay. It's your will. <clears throat> I bow down to your will. I accept. And I keep trying to do better. <clears throat> what you see in life is that people who are on a spiritual path and do their practice shape their mind according to the teachings of the Master. Things work wonderful with them. So many blessings come along. So much grace. So much direction. And uh, things become easier and easier. The more we stick to the truth, the more the truth comes to our rescue. The more we go far from the truth, the more the truth withdraws from us. We fall into illusion, we fall into deception. So instead of worrying about having things work the way we would like, you should better worry about become better human beings. And to become better human beings, we have to work on ourselves. Nobody is going to work for us. Nobody is going to do it for us. You have to change your habits. We are dominated by our habits. We have the best intentions. Then, when we find ourselves starting from the morning, do I get up or I don't? Do I get up and do my spiritual practice so that then I have a wonderful day? I have a wonderful attitude? And you don't. Most don't. So then our day is miserable. Our attitude is it's negative. And consequently, we attract negative things into our life. Things go wrong. Because we are wrong. We are not doing really our best. We are doing our worst. We are giving in to laziness. We are giving in to... unwillingness not wanting to cooperate to do our best. So that's the thing, we should do our best. And trust. Always trust. And eventually, surrender. Do your best, trust, surrender. And something happens, you just <coughs> you accept. We don't fight with it. 
because it's no use. Again, being unsatisfied always with whatever happens. It's crazy. It's foolish. And understanding that it's going wrong. It keeps going wrong. wrong. Everything is wrong in my life. I hear so many people telling me this. Everything goes wrong. This life, it's, it's bad. <laughs> it's you, it's bad. If everything goes wrong, there must be something wrong with you. So try to, to reshape your life. There is quite a difference between people who follow spiritual path and people who don't. People who follow spiritual path, they have a chance. Because they acquire some awareness of how this mechanism of life keeps happening, works. So they can do something with it. And people who don't follow spiritual path, who don't do any work on themselves, they just let life happen the way it does. But life is what we're making. It's all a series of actions and reactions. It's a long series of cause and effect. So we are now the result of what we have been before. And later on we are going to be the consequence of what we are now. We are in a certain way, things happen in a certain way. We are different, things happen in a different way. The same situation to two different people will work out differently because, because of the way we are. There is this very strong law of affinity that works in the all of life, the all of the universe. So we attract to ourselves things which are similar to us. But as far as people are concerned, as far as situations are concerned, nothing happens by chance. Everything is determined by this law of affinity, by causes and effects. There are so many people in this world with whom we have nothing to do. We never meet them, we never talk to them, we have nothing to, to share. Because they are not part of our universe. They are not part of our give and take. We meet only with people of these so many billions that are here. With those people with whom we have give and take. So here Sanji says, Kirpal, what is for you? Kirpal for him is God. It's not just this man who was called Kirpal Singh. For him, Kirpal Singh is, is Ishtadeva, his chosen divinity. In India you can choose so many kinds of Ishtadeva. From Ganesh to Shiva to Vishnu to Krishna to Rama to Kare. Kali, Durga, and so on and so forth. Endless. Guru Nanak, Kabir, Sikh Gurus. For him, this chosen divinity was Kirpal. So when he says Kirpal, what is for you? He's not saying that man who was born in Sayyad Kashan in Pakistan and lived this kind of life. There was the, the human pole through which this supreme Kirpal 
supreme being work for me. The form is my chosen divine. So this divine that will work, was working for me through this human pole, what is for everybody? Because this is God, and what is for everybody? It's not true, he doesn't worry. He just, he just does things, he doesn't worry. He's not like us. His supreme will moves everything. He's all knowing, and he knows right from the beginning what's meant to happen. If you just try your best, and then accept his will. Go accordingly, without fighting with it. Because, you know, fighting with a, with a giant is no, no work we can never be. Fighting with the Supreme Being is not worthwhile. We lose by enemies. So it's better to accept His will, surrender to His will, and keep wishing that things get better. Pray, things get better. He is the whole honor, the honor of the whole world, he is merciful to the poor. Except devotion, no worry works, even if you think a million times. It's the same what I was saying. Except devotion, nothing works. Devotion is spiritual practice. It's loving this supreme being, giving our life to it. This works. Nothing else works. The more we give our life to Him, the more things get better into our life. The more He takes care of all our details. The Supreme Being takes care of all these gifts. Now, we human beings, we work to make our living, to make our living situations, our home, our that we need for this life, but there are so many creatures in this creation that do not work to make their life living. It's only the humans that work to make their living. And yet, the Supreme Being provides for them because they keep living, so it means they get something to, to keep going. He provides for them what they need. They are better than us because they don't worry, really. I mean, yes, they, maybe they get hungry, they want to eat, but somehow they get the food. And if they don't get and they die eventually, it's okay. It means they have, it's, they have to die. So, this says here, this is the only mean. means. If you want to improve your life, if you want to improve yourself, all devotion is going to do it. Only your spiritual practice is going to do it, nothing else. And the more we, we give ourselves to Him, the more He takes care of us. The more we hold on ourselves, on our life, the less He cares for us. Because then we care too much about ourselves. That's worrying. I have to do everything myself. I, I have to care. I have to have uh, anxiety. But this we, we ruin our life. If you just do a spiritual practice, if you get up in the morning, every morning, and the sitting meditation, and we contact this inner light, and we come into this blissful state, then everything runs so smoothly. Everything is, is like interlinked, everything is uh, interconnected, synchronized. It's a wonderful something like that. If you don't do this, then everything 
keep hitting with each other and everything. It's in a fight. It's a continuous fight. Everything goes wrong. Running here and there to do whatever we're meant to do. I'm always in a hurry. But hurry and worry kill us, says Master Kripa. Worry and hurry go very much together. You're never on time for anything. Because we have no control of our mind. Instead of starting off 10 minutes before and go peacefully, or half an hour before, even better, go peacefully. No, the last moment, always. Because it's a habit. We get into this habit, always being late. So we have to run all the time. And this hurry just poisons our blood. And of course, if you are in a hurry, we worry that will I reach on time or not? Will I be able to manage? But then, since we are in a hurry and in a worry, we sit to eat and we stuff ourselves just to get some satisfaction from this crazy life. And then we don't digest properly and this becomes poison also. They kill ourselves. So these are the miseries of we human beings. Because we are unable to just shape our life, take our life in our hands and make something wonderful out of it. Then it says he makes high those who are low. You cooperate with him. If you know, take initiation, you will receive the teachings, you attend satsang, you understand, and then we act upon. And yes, from miserable beings that we were before, we become such better human beings. Good example. This is what the world needs. Good example. Not so much people who talk and give out theories and philosophies or religions and doctrines, but people who act, who have a different lifestyle and they show a different example. That's what we need. Master Kipaya say, looking for reformers, seeking reformers, not of others, but of oneself. We are so good at reforming others, we want to teach everybody how to live, what to do. But our life is what it is. I know so many people that keep telling others what to do, how to do. They are in a crazy situation with their life, with their relations and this and that, but they are ready to tell the other person, do this, don't do that, say this, don't say that. But begin yourself, saying the right thing and doing the right thing. So that's what we come to the path. That's why we come to the path because we want to become something higher, something better. And if we take the teachings, if we take initiation, and we work on it, we do our spiritual practice, we feed our soul with the light of God, we get into this blissful state, into this peace. Then, yes, then our life really improves. And from a low light becomes an elevated kind of a bright light, which shows that this person 
to something different, something better. I rarely met a person like this. Maybe never. And this is the best thing in this world. This is the best, the best help that we can give to this world. Setting a good example of a different kind of life. And you used to say, <clears throat> we want, you know, to impress the world, we want to be famous, we want to be recognized, acknowledged for being special or whatever. But it is, first of all, in our <laughs> environment, direct environment, that we have to be considered something different. We may be famous, but our life is a disaster in our daily interrelations. So what's the use of it? We are again playing a role which is not true. So it's first of all with our close relations, we have, be we have to be able to impress them positively and set a good example so that they also may improve their life by watching your life. It's the best help we can give to the world. Giving up me, me, do, di, di, the protector protects you. In the court of the Lord, the support is the support of the Master. The mighty car moves back. Sanji had very much to say about this. Me, mine. I am this, I am that, I am American, I am Italian, I am European, I am uh, Indian. I, I have these belongings, I have this knowledge, I have this and that, me, 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 all the time. You better say D, 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 D. He has all the knowledge, he has all the goodness. I try my best to do my best, but I am really nothing. Without his grace, I just worth nothing. I could be anything. I could be mad. I have no head whatsoever. If anything good is with me, it's because it has been given to me. How can I be proud of it? If I have any talents, any abilities, it's not because I mean it's not because of me. They were given to me by my birth somehow. I was born by to specific parents, in a specific situation, and somehow I got an opportunity to, to grow in me, to develop in me certain talents. It was a gift from life, from God. <coughs> it's nothing to be proud of. I am this, I am that, I am better than you, I understand better than you, I am more intelligent, I am more capable. People are full of this. And this is very much motive for fighting in this society, in this relations. <coughs> because each one, every person thinks to be better than the other one. There is never a person that thinks, even in the, even the most crazy person in this world, <coughs> to try to teach others how to behave and think that I know better than you. Rarely you find a person that he is so humble, so real, to say, look, I don't know anything. This creation, this universe is so vast, is so complex. Life is so intricate, is so... <coughs> I don't know anything about it, really, I know very few. Can I be proud of anything? Everybody is ready to teach and convert and... Uh, 
Everybody is convinced of so many things. I know, I am a believer, I am a non-believer, I believe in God, I am an atheist. Everybody knows. If it were at least surreal, so humble to say, oh my, I don't know, and I hope very few really. This creation is so vast, this universe is so complex, this God, I can't even grasp nothing of him. I'm trying to understand and trying to know, but really, I know very little. No, everybody. It's ready to teach everybody how, to, how things work. So this me me is a big problem. It brings wars, it brings fights, hates, restlessness. The Americans and the Europeans want to teach everybody how to live. That's what they've been doing for centuries. Going around the world, enslaving and killing everybody. And they keep doing it. And I tell you, the Europeans and the Americans are the big problem in this world. Not so much the others. They have been and they keep being. Because we are so full of me, I, I. I know I am powerful. I can teach everybody. I can kill everybody. We have this conviction that we can lead the world, but we have the big problem of the world. We brought everywhere violence, killing, robbing, destroying of civilizations, cultures and everything. That's what the Europeans have done always. And they keep doing it. But now they have somebody else beside the Americans. <clears throat> he always protects those who are clean and true within, reducing the gallows to pinprick. He cuts, cuts the trap of attachment and my. So who gets the protection, the grace from this Supreme Being? Those who are true and pure within, he says. To be true is very difficult. We cling much more to falsehood, to deception and to truth. needs a lot of self-control to be true in any given situation, in any given dealing that we have with anything and anybody. Pure and true. That's what we should become. They go very much together. Purity of intention and true living. <clears throat> we can do anything, but the intention is behind is what is going to determine the consequence, the result. Sometimes it may apparently do wrong things, but if the intention is good behind, 
then eventually the result will be good. Or we may do, apparently, excellent things, but the, if the intention is poison behind, is not pure, selfless, then the result won't be good. So the intention is very important in anything we do in life. Then things may go the way they, they want to go. But if our intention was good, we are at peace with ourselves. Whatever happens, it doesn't matter. I have a pure intention. So it's okay. We don't become frustrated. We are at peace with ourselves, no matter what. This bhajan contains very few simple concepts which are super important. Don't worry. Devotion works, nothing else. Your spiritual practice works. That's what is going to make you better, nothing else. Be humble, don't keep busting up. Be me, me. I, I. Just acknowledge that you are nobody in this vast universe. Even this planet seems washed from far. It seems like a speck of dust in this vast universe. A non existent something. So, what are we, human beings, these few human beings on this planet, in comparison with the vastity of life? How okay, can we be proud of anything? And then this, our intention must be always true and pure. Always have a good intention. Trust. My Guru is going to help me, going to protect me. By and by, according to possibilities, I will get better and better. So we thank Sergi for this beautiful bhajan. We take to our heart the teachings that He has given to us and we'll try our best to do better for now.